The first thing that you have to remember is that examiners are human beings. And as human beings, we are not perfect. We make mistakes. I make mistakes. You make mistakes. Examiners make mistakes. And I feel that examiner makes a mistake. It does not make them evil. It does not mean they hate you. It just means that they are human. But there has been quite a lot in the news recently about potential mistakes being made with marking of GCSE English papers. So in this video I am going to talk to you through how um, the standardisation, how they check um, examiners are marking the right thing, the problems that um, might be coming up this year, how it's going to affect grade boundaries, what you can do about it and should you do anything about it. There are always going to be a few differences in marking. The biggest differences we're going to see are in essay based subjects and this year it's been talked about a lot in relationship to English. But it's always going to be an essay based subject because there's going to be a bit of opinion. You're going to get less of those multiple choice questions where the answer is the answer, you're going to get less in maths and science because there's not a big debate about the location of protons or what two and two makes. Those answers are the answers. Whereas for things like English, especially for creative writing, there's a lot of opinion from the examiner as to what exactly a grade nine looks like, what exactly a grade seven looks like, what exactly a grade four looks like. Now there are a few things that the exam boards have in place to make sure that this isn't really an issue, that a grade 9 marked by somebody is the same as a grade 9 marked by somebody else, that a grade 4 marked on a Tuesday by person A is the same as a grade 4 marked on a Friday by person B. There is standardisation in place. Every single year examiners who are marking papers have to go through a set of standardisation. A senior examiner who's been doing this for years, who's very, very experienced, will mark a piece of work and say, this is the grade that this piece of work should get given. That same answer will then get sent out to all of the different examiners and they will have to mark it as well. And then the senior examiner checks their marking. Does the marking that the examiners have done agree with what the senior examiner thinks that mark should be? This is standardisation. There are seeded questions sent out to everyone marking papers to check that they're applying the mark scheme correctly. To check that the marks that they give are the correct marks to a bit of work. This standardisation, this assessment of examiners is an ongoing process. The senior examiners will check the first few papers they've marked and then about halfway through their marking allocation they'll check another few papers and they'll continually keep checking papers to make sure that the marks the examiners are given are the correct marks. So it's not as if they just employ somebody off the street and say here is a load of papers for you to mark and never check them. There is a constant assessment of how well people are marking going on. There are constantly like these, they're called seeding questions or seeded questions get sent out where the examiners, the senior examiners have agreed on what the mark should be and then the examiners get tested and there's like a tolerance of like you know one or two marks above or below to check that they're giving them the right marks and any examiner who is found to be outside this tolerance whose marking doesn't agree with what the senior examiners think that it should be they get stopped from marking and then they can undergo a bit of training they can like do a bit more practice and then maybe they can start marking again but it's not as if there were like rogue examiners who don't know what they're doing who aren't very good who are just let loose on thousands and thousands of papers the examiners are highly trained in what they do and they are constantly being checked the other thing that the exam boards put in place to make sure you really, really get the grade that you deserve is that the papers are divided up between examiners, or the questions are divided up between examiners, rather. So question one might be marked by examiner A, question two might be marked by examiner B, question three might be marked by examiner C. 
Now there were a number of advantages to this. If an examiner is marking the same question over and over and over and over again, they get very familiar with the mark scheme, they get very familiar with what good answers and what bad answers look like, so it's easier for the examiner to fairly sort out the marks. And it also means that if you do have an examiner who is marking under, who is marking over, it's only going to affect all one question on the paper, it's not going to affect the whole paper. So there are lots of things that the exam boards are doing or have done to make sure that you really, really get the right mark. This year, on Twitter, somebody has created an account which has now been deleted and has claimed to be um, an examiner, a GCC English examiner for years and has called the marking or the standardisation of this year's GCC English language a shit show. Yep, those are the words that they used on Twitter. They are shocked and horrified. This person has said that, in their opinion, students are being betrayed by the exam board um, and that standardisation is all over the place. Um, the problem with standardisation being all over the place is that nobody knows what a 4 looks like and nobody knows what a 7 looks like. And if the people that are marking don't know what a 4 looks like or a 7 looks like, for this year's questions, then it does make it kind of hard for them to mark. Now, this is somebody that created um, an anonymous Twitter account that has now been deleted and is saying all this stuff. This is just one person, so we don't know how true this is, we don't know how accurate this is. Um, I'm not speaking to this person, I'm going to link lots of news reports about it down below so you can go and read the news reports and the tweets for yourself and make up your own mind. But AQA have responded to this, not to me, they responded to the journalists that have contacted them and they pointed out that this is just one person's opinion. And this one person was marking below where the examiners thought they should be. So they were giving um, standardisation answers, they were giving lower marks for the answers than the examiners said that they should be. So they were marking too harshly and they were saying that the senior examiners weren't giving clear advice and that their standard or the seeded answers they were given weren't like good enough answers. Now AQA say that you know there are always going to be people that do things like mark outside the tolerances and the standardisation is a way to find those people. I imagine a lot of you are going to be worried and upset by this and this is worrying, I do understand where you are coming from but until we get your results there's not really a lot anyone can actually do about it so I really really do not suggest that you get in contact with the example because there's literally nothing they can do about it at the moment. There was some gossip online that the exam boards were doing this to try and fix the um, grey boundaries, but I'm not going to explain to you how exam boards uh, sort out grey boundaries at the moment, but that is not the reason, or th this is not a possible reason for this to happen. Um, that is not the way that grey boundaries are set. Um, it is, it is a much more complicated thing, this whole comparable results come down from the government. Um, the examiners cannot change the way that the marking is done to fix the grey boundaries, that would just mean that the, the gaps between the grey boundaries are a lot narrower and it would mean there would be a lot more like clustering of results. So like anything you see online uh, about that, is that, that's not the reason for doing it. Now if in August you um, are unhappy with your GCSE English and you want to get it remarked, then you can. GCSE results date is the 22nd of August. August, so you will have roughly a month to apply for a remark. Now there are various different types of remark, but a remark where somebody looks at it and decides whether it's been unfairly marked, you have to pay for these, and it's like thirty-seven fifty-five per paper. So not per GCSE, per paper. Now this can get quite expensive if there's a lot of things you want remarked. Now remarks are expensive, they do take time and there are some circumstances where remarks are a good thing and there are some circumstances where remarks aren't really necessary. So starting with the circumstances where you definitely should get a remark. If you got a three and you can see from the grey boundaries that you're really really close to that four, you are in a position where you're going to have to reset your GCSE English um, 
paying for a remark even if it's quite a stretch of your budget if it pushes you over that four and it saves you having to redo the whole thing again then you might consider that to be a really good use of your money but you have to remember that when you apply for a remark your grades might go down or up or they might stay the same or the actual mark might change but your grade might not change getting finding enough grades to push you over push you up over a grade boundary can actually be quite hard but if you are close to a grade boundary and you definitely need that high grade so that you don't have to resit it or you want to get onto an a level course then a remark is something you might want to consider now remarks aren't always the right way to go sometimes you might not get the grade that you want sometimes you might feel it's unfair and you might not be very happy with your grade um and your paper might not have been marked correctly but remarks aren't always the right thing for you because you don't know whether your paper's been marked correctly or not you might think that you deserve a higher grade you might guess that your papers might not be marked correctly and you might apply for a remark it doesn't mean your paper's going to change the mark if for example you got a five um but you were expected to get maybe a seven um but you don't want to do english or any other subjects at a level and the grades are enough to get you onto your a level course enough to potentially to get you into the university that you want um you don't necessarily need a remark unless you need a higher grade unless you really really want um that higher grade to get onto the a level course or so that you don't have to reset um sometimes it's not always worth it sometimes it's not always necessary because as i said there is always the risk that your mark might go down or it might go up so there are lots of things to take into consideration when you're thinking about getting a remark now some examples will let you see the paper or let your teachers see the paper straight away on the day so that your teachers can have a look at the paper and say no i disagree with the examiner this should be a higher mark put it in for a remark and sometimes the school might pay for your remark or sometimes they won't pay for the remark there were lots and lots of different things that you need to take into consideration so there's been quite a lot of the news about the GCC English papers of marking on GCC English papers recently but there really isn't a lot we can do about it at this stage the examples do have a lot of stuff in place to make sure the exams are marked fairly um so I really don't want you guys to worry about this too much I know it's easy for me to say and I know it's really really hard for you to actually to not worry about it um but there's nothing we can do about it now so let's just wait until august when we can do something about it and that is the appropriate time to worry about it um i'm going to be here with you every single step of the way guys um we can do this ouch mm, i'll be too quick